What is going on everyone? It's Brody back again with another tennis topic and today's tennis topic is going to be talking about the differences and similarities between the Wilson Blade 98 16 by 19 and the Head Radical MP. Now if you've watched my channel before you'll see that I've done full reviews on both of these rackets but a lot of people always have questions about which one should I get over the other or they just tend to compare these two because they're very similar rackets as to which one they may want to go with. So that's why I'm making this video so that I can go through and answer a few, maybe a few more of those questions comparing them side by side so you just can have a little bit more information to make a better decision as to what racket will work best for your game. So what I'll do first is I'll go through here the blade specs that I have written down, then I'll go through the radical specs, and then at the end of that, that will give you a good majority of the information in order to make a decision as to what may work best for your game. All right? Let's get started. So here with the Blade 98 16 by 19, just starting out with the name of it, you can see a few pretty key things that you need to be looking out for. Number one is the 98 head size, which 98 head size, you're usually looking at a smaller head size than the standard 100 that's kind of been around today. And the 98 head size, what that's gonna do is it's going to be a little bit smaller, so you get a little bit more help with control or placement every time you hit your shot, as well as you have a little bit of a smaller sweet spot. Usually with the 100 head sizes, you have a little bit more room for error because you have a little bit bigger sweet spot. The strings can move around a little bit more. The 98, that's not the case. That's why it's more of a control racket, and that's why it's usually more recommended for intermediate to advanced players because it does tend to be very hard to use if you're just starting out and you don't have the core fundamentals for actually hitting correctly yet. So, along with the 98 head size, you have the 16 by 19 string pattern. The 16 by 19 string pattern, that's gonna be pretty standard today. That's designed to help a little bit more with spin and just to make, make the racket a little bit easier to use for most players. Combining a 98 and a 16 by 19 string pattern, it's a pretty good combination in terms of making sure that you have the control from the smaller head size, but also a little bit more help with the spin coming from the string pattern itself because the strings are able to move a little bit easier compared to a more dense string pattern that has more string, let me let me rephrase that, that has a tighter string pattern to where it, this number would say like 18 by 20 or something like 18 by 19. So with that being said, we'll next move down to the weight of the actual blade 98, 16 by 19. So unstrung, you're looking at about 10.8 ounces, and excuse me, you're looking about about 10.8 ounces unstrung, going up to around 11.4 ounces strung. In grams, if you do use grams, I personally don't use it right off the top of my head, so I just use ounces first. But in grams, you have about 305 grams to about 320 grams strung, and this will vary based off of quality control from Wilson and also head these manufacturers they're not necessarily known for their quality control but it is kind of a rough idea as to where you should be looking especially for these rackets so with a 10.8 ounce unstrung weight and 11.4 ounce strung weight this is going to be a little bit more on the heavy side you usually don't see many rackets that are designed for all around type players or beginner players that are under that are gonna be above 11 ounces. So the blade being about 11.4 ounces strung, it is gonna be a little bit more hefty and that's where you really wanna make sure that you've been playing for a while and that this does not tire out your arm as you continue to play with it for hours upon hours upon hours. If the racket's too heavy for you right away and you can feel it as you're swinging, which that'll be the next one we get down to here in a few minutes. If you can feel that the racket's a little bit too heavy for you, don't, don't keep playing with it. It's not, a, it's not a tough guy contest trying to be like, I can use a heavier racket. It's like, no, just get the one that works best for you because you're gonna enjoy it more, you're gonna play better, and you have less likely to get injured because you're using a weight that actually works for your arm without tiring, or without having one that's gonna tire yourself out or just overextend or overexert your muscle because you're using something that isn't fit for your game at that moment. So the next we'll go here to the to this number. It's called stiffness, and the blade has a rating of 59 in the stiffness category. Now this is a very, I'll say, flexible racket. 
The more stiff a racket is, typically the more power it has, but that does also tend to mean it is gonna be a little bit harder on the arm. Usually stiffness you can see is above, I'll say is usually above 60 for majority of, majority of rackets, I'd say there's a decent range between like 59 to maybe 64, 63 as a stiffness rating for what is typically common. But that's where you do have to start to be careful because the higher the number is in stiffness, the more stiff the racket, so the harder it is typically on your arm, but the more powerful, the more powerful it is. So with the blade being a 59, you do get a little bit more of a flexible racket. It's a little bit easier on your arm, and it's just gonna that's mainly what you're looking for to where the less stiff racket usually gonna have a little bit more help with feel, and that way you can really tell where you're hitting your shot with your racket when it, excuse me, when the ball hits the string, rather than having it to be where if you have a stiffer racket, sometimes you can lose that feeling because the racket doesn't bend as much. And then finally down here, like I mentioned a little bit earlier, we have the 322 swing weight. Swing weight is how the racket will start to, is kind of just a way to say, way to say that the racket is going to feel heavy or feel light when you actually swing it. That's where swing weight you can have, you do want to test a few out before you just go ahead and buy one. Sometimes swing weight can make the racket feel entirely different than what you thought it was going to, and it can either be too much, too little, but you always want to be able to find the best balance for you. 322, not going to be the heaviest, excuse me, not going to be the most heavy swing weight, not going to be the lightest swing weight. You're looking pretty good in the middle so it's just kind of normal it's kind of normal nothing too crazy right there and then this part right here the 20.6 millimeter beam width the blade is a constant beam racket so the if you look at the entirety of the racket itself it's going to be 20.6 millimeters this is usually more towards the light or the very thinner side of the racket so that's where you're also helping get a little bit more help with feel as well as a little bit more help with flexibility since it's not too thick to where it's going to increase the stiffness of the racket. So that was the Wilson blade, and now we'll move over to the head radical. Head radical, you can see why these rackets start to get a little bit more compared to each other right now, because you can see the head radical, you have the 98 head size, just like the blade. You have the 16 by 19 string pattern, just like the blade did as well. But the weight's where you start to see a difference. So the weight of the radical MP you're looking at about 10.6 ounces unstrung going about to 11.2 ounces strung. If you're using grams, that's about 300 grams unstrung to around 315 grams strung. And that's where it starts getting interesting because most of the times, both of these rackets are designed to be control rackets. Usually with control rackets, you're going to get the heavier, the heavier weights like the blade is. But the radical changes it up a little bit, getting a little bit of a lower static weight. So that way, this one is a little bit more accessible to more types of players. And that's where some people find that the radical tends to work a little bit better for them than the blade because the radical is not, is not as heavy. That's where you really want to make sure that demoing these rackets to see what weight works best for you is going to, make, is going to be, a, I would say, a very big deciding factor as to why you should go with either one of these two. Now, moving away from weight, you do have a 62 stiffness here in the radical, so it is gonna be a little bit stiffer. That does sometimes equate to a little bit more power, like I said, so some people feel the radical MP has a little bit more power than the blade because of the stiffness. Some people feel that the weight of the blade compared to the weight of the radical makes it so that the blade has a little bit more power. That's where you're, that's where, like I just mentioned, the demo program becomes very important so you can actually try these as well as what else you're looking for. If you're trying to avoid it, if you're trying to avoid arm issues, then you may want to look more towards the 59 stiffness blade, whereas the 62 stiffness head radical MP might be just a little bit too much for where, for how your arm is right now. And that's where the blade may take the cake, even though it's just a tiny bit heavier in the actual static or normal weight. And then down here, the 319 swing weight, the 319 swing weight being a little bit lower than the 322 swing weight of the blade, you're gonna have an easier time swinging through with the radical. That is also very help, helped out by the lower regular weight of the blade, of the radical MP. So that's where 
that's where it is more like I said, it is more able to be used by a wider audience compared to the blade in itself. And finally here, down at the beam width, you'll notice I have three different numbers here, unlike with the blade, where I only had one. The blade, the blade being a constant beam, like I said, very flexible, very consistent. The radical has a 20 millimeter beam, 23 millimeter, and 21 millimeter. So what that means is that towards the head of the racket, or at the top, if you're looking at your racket sideways, so instead of looking directly at the string, you turn to the side, you're just looking at the actual racket beam itself. If you look towards the top, the head radical MP is going to be a little bit thinner. Then once you get like towards the middle of the actual racket where the strings are, it's going to be a little bit thicker. And then once you get towards the throat and go back down, it's going to be, it's going to be a little bit thinner again, more like the 20 millimeter right here. So the reason to do that is that it helps give the, it helps give the racket a little bit more just access to power because you have the thicker one that's right here without making the racket extremely stiff and going up into something like the 70s where you'll see like the P Bablat pure drive being and that's why that's a power racket it has a very thick beam as well as a high stiffness with the head radical having three different beam measurements one being the smallest up near the head the middle being the thickest so that it can help game, have the racket gain the most stability where you're most likely to hit the ball. And then, and then 21 being a little bit smaller than the largest one. That is going to be where you're going to just get a little bit of a more flexible feeling towards the beam, but not as much as up towards the head. And that's why the head radical MP can sometimes feel very off to some people because it has that weird beam split, whereas the blade has the more consistent beam width. So you, whatever you feel with the blade, no matter what blade 9816 by 19 you're using, you're gonna feel very similar and a very, I'll say, just a very similar feel throughout the entire racket. Whereas depending on where you hit on the radical, it can feel off, even if you're right inside the sweet spot, but you're just out by a little bit, that different beam width is gonna play a little bit more of a deciding factor in the back. So with that being said, I hope that these instructions and just kind of like putting these side by side was helpful for you deciding what, what racket you should be looking into or what racket you may wanna demo in order to find, figure out what works best for you. With that being said, if you liked the video, leave a like on it. Comment down below any more questions that you have about the Head Radical MP or the Wilson Blade 9816 by 19 I'll get back to them as soon as I can. And subscribe to the channel so we can grow the channel, get the information out there from the people that have it to the people that need it. There's a lot of tennis misinformation in the tennis community, so I took it upon myself to make this channel so that we can get rid of that and get the information out there from the people that have it to the people that need it. And as always, take care.